now for the final event of the evening. Best two out of three falls with a 60 minute time limit. In this corner, weighing 240 pounds, Hans Schmidt. His opponent on this side of the ring, from Fairbanks, Alaska, weighing 275 pounds, Eilton Erich. And the referee, Joe Jeswick. Good evening, everybody. Russ Davis, Ringside International Amphitheater in Chicago. This is another one of those great matches that promoter Fred Kohler has put together and you folks have been wanting to see. Yukon Eric on your left, Hans Schmidt, the old madman from Munich, on your right, and Joe Jeswick is the referee. This two out of three falls, 60 minute time limit. This boy Yukon Eric, Comes from up in Alaska way. And is a real big rugged one. He wrestles barefooted, but with blue jeans on. Hans Schmidt just wrestles with everything, including the ring posts, and never his conscience. He's just out to win, and that's the way it goes. But here's a husky one, this boy. The bell, and we're off. Bell sort of has the asthma tonight. It, in this crowd, it sounds like a dime store alarm clock. Well, you're going to hit me, I'll hit you. You can Eric, a Swedish. Or Norwegian. At any rate, he's a Scandinavian. He's a tremendously powerful man. Cross chin lock on him. The way Schmidt applies this cross chin lock, it quite often is a choke. The way he has it at the moment, it's just over against the juggler vein. You can always make a takedown with a hair. Get over the ropes. It doesn't do Hunt's state of mind any good. Schmidt is known for losing his temper, and the referees always try and stay out of arm's reach. Waist lock. Have to break it up. You're in the corner, boys. There's a python or a wraparound. Use man's own arm to choke him discommode him in some way. I think it has to do with not getting enough oxygen to keep going. Eric making an arm bar here. Doesn't bother him, just hurts Smith's fist. This fellow's as hard as iron. It's tremendous. Knee right in the stomach. Anything any good, is it? Oh, getting rid of him. Just pick him up and throw him away like an old used washcloth. Insist on that, Hansi. Uh, He means it. 
He lets you know he's going to hit you, and then he does. Make your old backbone joints rattle like a pair of bum castanets. This fellow, Yukon Eric, is supposed to have ten and a half inches of chest expansion. And when you put a chest lock on him that way, he just swells up like an old toad and makes you let go. Look here, little feller, what are you trying to do? Says Eric. Here's a waist lock now that Schmidt's got on him. Making him work for his breath already. This is like trying to get into a set of woolen long johns that are about four sizes too small. What Schmidt's attempting to do. Can't make it, can you, boy? <laughs> that didn't improve your situation a bit, did it, hon? scissors open. Hans, by that maneuver, maneuver, was trying to put enough pressure on Yukon Eric's feet that he couldn't squeeze. Tickle the bottom of his feet, Hans. That might help you. That doesn't do any good to kick him in between the back. That's like stomping on the floor. <coughs> <coughs> Sit down. He wants to talk to you. Now body scissors full. Well, it's sort of half open and half full here now. It's sort of half, if you know what I mean. him down the Capadine kids. He's getting a headache from his scissors. Trying for pin, but that shoulder's up, as you can see. Uh, that's his nose, and it's attached permanently. Finally got 
him loose. What's the matter, Aunt? Is he nailed down? An arm lock, Eric has. Get out of my way. Coldish like though. Philly ish, maybe I should say. Now you sit up there till I come back. <laughs> has finally met somebody who can dish it out. The way he can. There was a chin lock, toasted. A wrist lock, single. Uh-oh, there's a head scissors. I imagine those old blue denims feel good when you get a couple of wrinkles caught alongside of your cauliflower. doing to his pinkies in under here. Settle your thinking, old boy. Keep his feet out of my face. It's ugly enough, it doesn't need any rearranging. Schmidt flailed out. But at what price cauliflower? Ooh, there's a headlock at the granddaddy of all of them. Uh, that's his mouth you have your finger in there, chum. Mitt made a drop out and tried for a pickup. He's just now completing it. This was what he was after. This is the half-standing version of the spread eagle. It does you no good anyway it's put on. With the strength in that man's legs. That beats me. Headlock.
there's Yukon Eric's famous old bear hug. This one breaks the lease, kids. You're doing swell at getting him loose, are you, Hans? Hmm? Trying everything in the books here, gouging, choking, beating. He's on the way out, one, two, three. And so the first ball, Leslie, goes to Yukon Eric over Hunt Schmidt. New meanie from Munich. And there are a lot of people glad to see him pinned, as you can see. have it that makes it official. Yukon Eric has won over Hans Schmidt. But however, that's just the first fall. Hans will wend his way back over here now to his own corner. This bear hug of Yukon Eric's, Hans shouldn't feel too badly about it. It's put everybody else in the wrestling game out of the running. And it is a terrific thing. It just breaks you down in the running gear to where you just don't have any love for the feast at all. Schmidt's just now beginning to realize that uh, he lost the first fall. He'll walk around, smack at the seconds, at the ropes, and everything else. Even the Andy Frain men are down here at Schmidt's corner tonight. I don't think there's any wrestler in the business who is hated any more wholeheartedly than this boy Schmidt. And I don't think any fellow has won the favor of wrestling audiences in the big time circuits any quicker who's had any faster rise to stardom than Yukon Eric. Up Montreal some time back, he lost half of his left ear. One night in a match with Killer Kowalski, Kowalski put that famous knee drop on him and Eric got out of the way of it all except his ear and it just completely tore it off of his head. Uh-oh, I missed it. You're gonna make him mad. This boy's used to fighting with lumberjack boots on and axes and everything else. He's got a terrific cut across his back where he was hit by one of those lumberjack's light axes. Schmidt's out. Well, go all the way out, says Aaron. This is a gold tooth of Eric's that shows up here. It makes him look sometimes as though he's smiling. How do you like that, he says? <laughs> he doesn't flinch from anybody. Well, there's a real good one, Hans. There's a bare foot right in the stomach. brains out on the ring fitting, huh? Well, they're padded, but I still want to, wouldn't want to hit my head on them. Knee lift. It'll take starch out of anybody.
Oh, no. Literal translation, you're a bum. If you're a lip reader and can understand German, why then maybe you're in. Because Hans gets mad and that's all he shouts. Fifty-five pounds of him lands too, believe me. Backbreaker. One. Look out. Don't toss him out of the ring on me. Or Clinky. Another backbreaker. Let's see if this one will keep him still. Nope, not quite. Hans just succeeds and gets thrown out of the ring every time. Gentle knee lift to the middle of the face. That's always good for him. There's another one. Jeswick's finally learned to stay out of the way of men at work here. Three of those backbreakers in a row. No one has ever taken more than one of them to put him out of commission. Well, that's four. Well, he is getting a little weaker, but I don't know whether he can hold out or not. Or whether Schmidt will have the strength to lift him again. Well, he has it. One, two, three. I was fully expecting Schmidt. Well, he did get tossed off. <laughs> Not until it was too late. You've lost the fall, Eric, my boy. It makes a fall apiece for Hans Schmidt and Yukon Eric. We'll get it all made official here in a minute, and then we'll get a word from the boss. you were a little wrong you said first fall it's the second one chum it's the first one for for hunt now that we got that handled uh, we'll get on with a match both of these men both the uh, hunt schmidt and uh, yukon eric have been crowding lou fez for his title. Eric has not as yet here at International Amphitheater met Thez. And I think when they do come together, it will be Tilly bar the door. There's no doubt of that. Isn't that fellow tremendous? I never saw such a chest in all my life. Unexpanded, it measures 62 inches. Schmidt here is no baby, but he certainly looks like it alongside of Eric. Schmidt generally comes in, oh, anywhere from 220 to 245. Uh, summer times, he'll drop a little weight due to summer heat. Eats rather. And then in the winter, he generally picks it up. But this boy, Eric, just seems to go right through the year, always 255 or better. I have seen him weigh in as high as 280. These wrestlers are tremendous eaters, you know. Well, there's the bell, and we're off. A drop kick. Schmidt figures he's got him in bad shape. He'd better keep him that way. Another one. Oh, just 
stand up and kick him in the Adam's apple, eh? Another one. One, two, three. Yep. I'm like everybody else. Doggone it, I wanted to see Yukon Eric win, but uh, he didn't. Hunt Schmidt has won the match from Yukon Eric in this best two out of three fall 45 minute affair. We'll get it all made official and that'll just about wrap things up. So there you've got it, dear friends. Pappy Davis ringside at International, another promoter Fred Kohler's world matches. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be seeing you.